everyone, I'm Jensen. Thank you for joining me for some afternoon tea. Uh, there are a few new stories that I really want to get to with you all, but first, let me show off what I'm munching on. This week I made monster cookies, which are flourless and therefore gluten-free for all of my friends with sensitive stomachs like me. It's packed full of chocolate chips and M&Ms, absolutely delicious. And this week I'm using my Bob Ross mugs. I'm feeling extra artsy uh, and I am cheating and drinking coffee instead of tea, but it's from a local roaster, Black Kite Coffee, so check them out, absolutely wonderful. But on to the news. Hollywood is about to profit off of all of our nostalgia with a new live action hybrid magic school bus movie. Now we don't have a release date yet, but we do know Elizabeth Banks will be playing the beloved Miss Frizzle, which has actually gotten a lot of pushback on social media. And look, is it the choice I would have made? Probably not. But you never know. I don't want to pigeonhole anyone. She's had some weird roles. Let's see what she can do. I believe in you, Liz. Get Betsy Ross on speed dial. We may need to add another star to the flag. A bill just went through the house that would make Washington, D.C. our 51st state. Congratulations, D.C. You go, D.C. But next, it moves on to the Senate, and it's really unlikely to do anything once it gets there. But you never know. And fun fact, once in my life, I've dressed up as Betsy Ross and even sewed my own flag out of felt. So, yeah, I had friends. And on to our main story for the afternoon coronavirus in Ohio and look I know we're all tired of hearing about it but the problem is we can't just ignore our way out of a situation like I did with my eighth grade boyfriend. Sorry Tyler. But Ohio stayed in fairly good shape over the last month or so but last week we kicked off another spike with Thursday marking the fourth most new cases found in a 24-hour period not counting the time we mass tested in prisons. But of course we can't just take those numbers at face value. For instance, Ohio is now testing more than ever. In fact, we conducted the most tests since late March on Wednesday the 24th, the day before experts reported that new spike. However, there's one teensy bit of data that has Ohio health experts pumping the brakes a little bit. And that, my dear Watson, is the positivity rate. As you can probably guess, the positivity rate is the percent of positive test results they're finding from the total, which seems to give us a clearer picture of how the virus is actually spreading. Overall in Ohio, the rate has stayed at just around 5%, and DeWine said Thursday that number is holding true for the most part, even with the recent spike. But there's one part of the population in which that rate is actually increasing, and that's for people between the ages of 20 and 30. And let me explain why that's important. Throughout April and May, just about 10% of young people in that age group were testing positive, and then earlier this month, the rate of positive tests went down, which is no surprise and is actually what's expected with more people getting tested. But in the last few weeks, that number has begun to ramp up again with 14% of tests conducted in people aged 20 to 30 yielding a positive result. And experts say that number rising is a clear indicator that the virus is still being spread in our communities. But what's the big deal, right? We know that generally people in these populations have less of a risk for complications, which is good. But the problem is health experts worry about these young people then going out and accidentally infecting someone in a high risk category. So are things gonna start shutting down again like they are in the South? Well, that really depends. DeWine seems to have a completely different strategy this time around. Instead of creating blanket orders that affect the entire state, it seems like he's gonna be targeting specific hot spots and working with local leaders to figure out the best solution for them. But a reporter did ask DeWine if we could see mass orders in some of those hot spots individually, and DeWine said, that he hopes it doesn't get there, but if it did, it wouldn't be a decision he made on his own, which really seems like it's unlikely, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. So what does this all mean? Honestly, just make smart choices, assess your situation, arm yourself with data, and go forth from there. Experts are saying the virus is still out there, but for most people, as long as you're keeping your distance, washing your hands, wearing a mask when possible, then you don't need to put your life on hold. But that's all I have for today, so if you have any questions, send me a message, drop a comment, whatever you feel like doing. I have a bunch of my sources and links to other helpful articles in the description of this video, including the recipe to those monster cookies, which I'm about to dive into. So get out there, make informed decisions, and I'll see you next time.